that's obscene that is obscene oh my god hey what's up it's indy welcome to my channel thanks for joining me this is a topic that i've been wanting to cover for a while ever since i heard about antilia which is the ambani's family home which is the most expensive house in the world i think architecture is really interesting and i studied fine arts in school in college so i have a special interest in this topic so let's learn about it the most expensive home on the planet oh my god in the inner city of mumbai india not far from the poverty-stricken slums on the renowned altamont road stands antilia the most expensive home ever created this home ascends 27 stories oh stretching gosh. 568 feet high granting the massive structure wow. with prime views of the arabian sea in technical terms, the home is the second most expensive residential property in the world. Considering wow. Buckingham Palace is worth around 5 billion US dollars. However, Buckingham Palace is considered a crown property, whereas Antilia is a private residence. And Jeez. the most expensive uh. private residential property at that. With some pricing estimates as high as 2 billion dollars. Even still, any list in which a residence is preceded by Buckingham Palace pretty much guarantees that place is going to be over the top luxurious and is likely a house I'd love to move into. In this video, I'll take you on a virtual informative That's tour so of this tall. ostentatious estate while engaging all of two of your senses. In this massive home, there are several ceilings that are double or triple heighted, so the 27-floored skyscraper looks more like a 50- or 60-floored building. Can you imagine only being as tall as an ordinary 27-floor building? <laughs> Laughable. <laughs> On some of the lower floors, there is a multi-level car lot that can hold 168 vehicles, including Mukesh's precious RS5 Craw Maybach, a car for very important people. Somewhere in that car lot is also a car service station. But if cars aren't your style, don't worry. Wow. The home also has three helipads placed on the roof. Few things say billionaire like more than one helipad on the roof. Both the private car lot and helipads are violations of residential bylaws in Mumbai, but from what we can tell, no one has forced the billionaire's hand to make any changes. Above the car lot, you'll find an extravagant lobby wow. composed of nine elevators. Further up is a two-story recreation center with a lap pool, a gym, a juice bar, a dance studio, and a yoga studio. Floors like these are how Jeff Bezos transformed his I Sell Books body to his I Sell What I Want physique. As you continue to ascend, you will eventually run into a spa and a ballroom. The ballroom oh is adorned with multiple crystal chandeliers that cover 80% of the ceiling, leaving a shameful 20% exposed and unadorned. To capitalize on the <laughs> entertainment focus areas of the home, there's a movie theater that sits 50 viewers. There are multiple balconies and terraces with luscious gardens hanging over the sleek facade along the home. Facade. The vegetation attached to <laughs> the sides facade. of the building are meant to <laughs> absorb sunlight in order to keep the interior as cool as possible. Hopefully that touch can put a dent in what must be a monstrous electricity bill. As oh if all God, this luxury wasn't enough of an escape from the hot, busy streets of Mumbai. The home comes fitted with an ice room equipped with a snow generator. What? Meant to You're mimic kidding. a winter wonderland. A creative addition rivaled only Is this by the for real? of Willy Wonka. The immaculate structure was designed by architects Perkins and Will out of Chicago. And the interior design was overseen by an Australian company called Lighten Holdings. While the 400,000 square foot building is home to just six, it's also meant to make room for a staff of 600 cooks, cleaners, and security personnel. So that makes the size of the mansion less excessive, right? What? I double-checked that stat, by the way, and I can confirm. A hundred staff per family member. The building is named after a legendary island, also called the Isle of the Seven oh Cities. Gosh. The tale of this island originates from an old Liberian legend in which bishops fleeing from the Muslim conquest of Hispania escaped to an island and created seven settlements there. There's not much else on that fun fact, and no one seems to know why the owners of the home took to that fabled island, but that's the thing with being a billionaire. No one questions your decisions. 
Considering the unique shape of the skyscraper and the fact that its construction cost not six, not seven, not eight, but ten figures, it'd be a fair assumption to presume the design of the home is symbolic, or at least, you know, on purpose. And that assumption would be correct. This incredible structure was meticulously crafted with Hindi influence and generously laced with religious symbolism. Within the 27 stories, there are six sections of the home that are meant to reflect earth, water, fire, air, sound, and light. These elements were placed from bottom to top as to mimic not Nickelodeon's avatar, The Last Airbender, but the ascension <laughs> to enlightenment. Throughout the mansion, there are two reoccurring motifs, the sun and the lotus. These symbols are meant to represent rebirth. The materials used to stand for these themes include marble, crystal, and none other than Mother of Pearl. There is a temple in the home in which the family of six goes to pray regularly. There are many statues of Hindu deities throughout the home, including the Hindu god Ganesh, revered as the remover of obstacles, and Shiva, the Hindu deity who destroys to make way for new creation. Along with religious themes and the motifs of Lotus and Sun, the house is said to have been inspired by the Atlantic Ocean. The owner of the $2 billion home is Mukesh Ambani, a petroleum titan, chairman of Reliance Industries and, surprise surprise, the richest man in India. Mukesh is responsible for a fifth of India's exports, which is absolutely outrageous considering India makes up for a third of the Earth's population. Mukesh's father created a business that turned into the world's biggest producer of polyester fibers and yarns. Mukesh multiplied his inheritance many times over to become one of the richest men in all of Asia. For years, Mukesh was a member of the top 10 richest people in the world. And during one surge in India's stock market in 2007, he was believed to be the richest man on the planet. But as of recently, he sits comfortably at the 20th spot. Mukesh is worth 40.1 billion US dollars and is 61 years old. Did someone ask for a list of the richest people on the planet? Okay, here it is. Number one, Jeff Bezos, Amazon. Number two, Bill Gates, Microsoft. Number three, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway. Number four, Bernard Arnault, Louis Vuitton. Number five, Amancia Ortega, Zara. Number six, Carlos Slim Hello and family. Number seven, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook. Number eight, Larry Ellison, Oracle. Number nine, Larry Page, Alphabet, co-founder of Google. Number 10, Charles Koch, Koch Industries. Koch. Number 11, Koch. David Koch, you guessed it, Koch Industries. Koch. Number 12, Sergey Brin, Google. Number 13, Michael Bloomberg, Bloomberg. <laughs> Number 14, Ma Huateng, Tencent Holdings. Number 15, Jim Walton, Walmart. Number 16, Rob Walton, Walmart. Number 17, Walmart. Alice Walton, Walmart. Walmart. Number 18, Steve Ballmer, Microsoft. Number 19, Francois Betancourt Myers Francois. and family, L'Oreal. Number 20, and our guy, Mukesh Ambani. Ah, we just love lists here at Mr. Luxury. As you might have noticed from the list, Mukesh is one of only two individuals from Asia to earn a spot on the list. Mumbai is the commercial capital of India and is also called the city that never sleeps because I guess they didn't know that slogan was already taken. This city is also home to the entertainment industry in India, so it's commonly known as Bollywood, yet another thing they ripped from the United States. While the city is home to the world's most expensive Oof. house, it's unfortunately also home to the world's largest slum. The popular film Slumdog Millionaire was set in Mumbai. The public reception of the house's creation has been harsh at best. I would imagine. I believe offending neighbors comes standard when you're creating a home worth over a billion dollars. But there is certainly warrant for any offense taken in this particular case, I must admit. While the house was built on the richest stripe of land in the city, it's hard to not notice the contrast in a city like Mumbai, with such depths of poverty just blocks away. Gion Prakash told the New York Times in 2010 that the home, 
is in a way reflective of how the rich are turning their faces away from the city. In Mumbai, 40% of children under the age of 5 are underweight. The gap between the rich and the poor is as stark and vast here as any other place in the world. Still, there are some that bring up the charitable acts of the Ambani family, which include the creation of a hospital. When discussing the moral responsibilities of the family, not to mention numbers of the philanthropic ventures, specifically by Nita Ambani, Mukesh's wife. Which is great and all, but no one is going to ignore the gargantuan mansion towering over the city, or any of Mukesh's indulgences other than the mansion. Years before the creation of Antilia, Mukesh bought his wife an air bus for her birthday for $60 million. He had the passenger jumbo jet refitted with a living room, a bedroom, satellite TV, a sky bar, and a spa. Unlike most families worth billions, the Ambani family owns just the one home as opposed to the expected several around the globe. That's Initially, the family shared a house with Mukesh's mother and brothers. But after Mukesh's father passed away of a stroke, he decided to break the bank on the 400,000 square foot home. The children of Mukesh and Nita all studied at universities in the States. Isha, the eldest daughter, recently graduated from Yale. Her twin brother, Akash, and younger brother, Arnat, both graduated from Brown University. Not that I'm in any position to judge Mukesh as a father, but it's nice to see he raised three Ivy Leaguers. That's pretty much all I've got on Antilia and the Ambani family. As always, I'm Mr. Luxury. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Pip pip de doodly do. What? <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine. What? Everyone, I don't know. Maybe, okay, I don't even know where to, where to start here. Yes, it would be great to have enough money, lots of money, to have whatever you want. But I feel like there's a point where people just start buying stuff and paying for things and stuff that they really just will never use or don't actually need, which is fine. I'm not judging anyone's choices here, but like, wow. It's quite interesting that the Ambani's only owned the one home, but I suppose a house like that is enough for anyone. It's huge and it has enough space for a hundred staff per, per family member and there's only six of them. Talk about ridiculously excessive. I couldn't imagine having a hundred people waiting on me and serving me and just being there for literally anything I could ever want. That's ridiculous. And I guess good for them for providing jobs and I really hope that their, their staff are paid well but that's insane. You know, there's a point where it's like, oh, this is great, you know, I'm wealthy, I'm famous, I don't have to do anything for, for, my, for myself, I can just have someone else do it, but there's another point where it's like, oh my gosh, there's people everywhere and I just wanna be alone for one second, I wanna wear sweatpants today and I don't wanna get my makeup done, but of course they still have their choice, I think. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they don't get to decide whether or not they want to be dressed up and put in makeup and all that. And I can only imagine how offensive it must be for the people who live in Mumbai, you know, to, to look at their houses and their struggles and, you know, any lack of money that they may have. And then in the distance see this, what, two million or two billion dollar house? Five billion? I don't, I don't know. Two billion, whatever, five dollars. <laughs> two billion dollar house. That's just the picture of excess. That must be so, I would be upset, you know. There's a massive wealth disparity in most countries, I would imagine, and it's a very tough subject, right? People will argue that these people worked very hard for their money and that they earned it fair and square, and others will say that they earned it by exploiting people. Both are true, but there's a point where it's like, how much of this money can you actually use? How much do you need? Even if your needs include having a hundred staff and being able to do whatever you want anytime, how much money does that take and what can you do with the extra to help other people? On one hand, it's okay for someone to have a massive amount of wealth and on the other, is it? 
is it okay when there are so many people who are human just like them that are struggling? It's just something to think about, you know? How much does one person actually need? Anyway, thanks for watching. I thought this was a very interesting video, even though the narrator was, uh, you know, weird. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you're a subscriber, I appreciate your support. You're the best. And if you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button and join our happy family here. I'd really appreciate it. And we would love to have you. And thanks for your time. I'll see you later.